Welcome to River City Plus, the show. After the show, we had a phenomenal conversation this morning on River City Live, and we want to keep those good vibes going. So, Chris, just for anybody that missed us this morning, give us a quick snapshot at what MVP is and what's going on this weekend. MVP is Merging Veterans and Players. It's a nonprofit organization that uh, brings athletes and veterans together once the uniform comes off is to help with their mental health and well-being, physical fitness, and just a peer-to-peer -peer support group to help anybody when they come out of the uniform. One thing we were discussing, and we literally had to hold off because I wanted you all to be part of this conversation, was the fact that it is so challenging when you are an athlete or a, a military personnel to ask for that help because all of our training, especially like, I feel like we could have this conversation back in our day. <laughs> if you were having a problem, rub some dirt in it. If you fell over, rub some dirt in it. There was no whining in sports. There was no whining in military. And you are very conditioned to just suck it up and keep pushing. And the reality is, is that's very unhealthy, but we didn't know that because we were trained to be, to be tough, to keep going, to push through. And even looking back on my career as an athlete, there's so many things that I wonder, why didn't I question that? Or why did I think that was acceptable or okay? Um, and I can only imagine how that was magnified in the military. You just do it. And you, in the military, they tell you what to do. You, yeah. you have a mission. Um, when you're at war, you know, if you don't do what you're supposed to do, people die, especially right. me as a doc. I take great pride. And we had 58 people come through that got injured out there that they brought to me that weren't already passed away. Every single one of those um, guys came back home. And like, we talk about that all the time. Like, I, I, I can't tell you enough how proud of that I am. And you just do what you got to do, especially in the football world. I was talking in an interview last week. These guys, um, my parents lied for me to go play sports, you know, because I was always a bigger kid. I was like five years old, six years old, playing with the eight-year-olds so I could go out there and play football. So you're playing from six years old until your 30s or 40s, uh, Tom Brady. Like, what are you going to do if you don't set yourself up for success financially, mentally, even if you are set up uh, financially? Like, what do I do? I'm used to working out in the summers. I don't have anything to do. You know, I don't have any kids. What am I going to do with my life? And that's when those dark thoughts start entering and you don't know what to do it's it's challenging it's an identity crisis i i had it twice once when my eligibility was done and i never wanted to see another white round volleyball <laughs> ever again in my life um never thought i would want to play again and then again when i retired professionally um because i just didn't know what to do with myself i went from you know training three to four times a day to just staring at yes. a wall because I just didn't know what to do with my time. I knew I needed to do something, but I was so used to having a very, very specific schedule. I, I knew what to wear. I knew where to be. Yeah. I knew who to talk to. I knew what to do. And it's challenging when you, when you come out of that. So how do you see that relating to people when they come out of military and you, you had both, you came out of sports and you came out of the military. Like how does that impact people mentally? Um, for me, it, it's, it's still hard. I still have bad days. When I came out of the military, I have a master's degree. I have all kind of accolades and I started working and I didn't really like what I was doing. I didn't want to have a job. I wanted something that I took a pleasure in going to every day. So after like two weeks of doing what I was doing, I don't want to do that anymore. So I wanted to find something, you know, to, to take my time. You know, I, I miss a lot of time with my children. So uh, I got a couple of teenagers and 11 year old. So I want to spend more time kind of make up for time loss and be there for them for whatever they need. But uh, finding a job or whatnot still, it's been almost three years since I retired and MVP is really the only thing that I've found and I'll do this for free like I want to help anybody that I can get that mental health uh, back to where it needs to be because I went through it and I know what it's like so I want to be there for for them but it was hard it was really hard and my wife noticed it she told me she's like you're not the same man I fell in love with like that war changed you and uh, finally I went to go get help and I realized it and when you decided to go get help what was it that happened if you don't mind sharing so um, after she told me that we were kind of on the rocks because I was gone for a long time I was on the ship being built in Mississippi and uh, it was supposed to be a year long but there was a lot of issues with the ship being built and uh, it took uh, almost three years for the ship to be built so I came home one time and uh, she told me she wanted to leave me like you're not the same dude I fell in love with um, I don't want this anymore uh, and I started thinking about it like man I'm at the split time with the kids I was going crazy you know started drinking um, I almost took my life 
Uh, I had a gun to my head with the bullet safety off everything. I was like, I'm done. Like, I don't want this pain anymore. I'm about to end my life. Like, I didn't want to kill myself. I just like, I didn't want the pain. I'm losing everything that I have. I quit the military to, you know, I stopped the military to come back to my family and like my family's leaving me. So she came in and she saw that and, uh, she yelled for the girls, the twins. And I, I lost it. I started crying. I put the gun down. Like, man, I really do need help. So, um, I'm, I'm I'm so thankful that I found MVP because a lot of those guys, there's so many stories that a lot the same thing that I went through. So uh, they they they've helped me, and I'm I'm a changed man. I'm way better off for it. Um, I I can't thank those guys enough. First of all, thank you so so much for trusting us and sharing that with us. I can't mm -hmm. imagine how challenging that is to relive, even though you're so many years removed from it. But you shared with me before we came on that you actually lost more people outside of the war as a doctor to yeah. to suicide to taking their own lives and it is it's a challenging topic to talk about but you got that close so many people do get that close and some people don't actually come back from that mm -hmm. and so having this organization where you can feel safe and open up what do you want people to know about that change um hmm. i just want them to know they're not alone like there's that's that's why it's so good about having athletes and veterans because even if I have issues and I don't want to talk to you about what we had we could always talk about sports we could talk smack about each other's sports teams or just whatever you kind of connect through sports and that opens up that lines of communication and then sometimes hey this is what I got going on like I trust you man like I, I, I need you to know this I, I need help like just let them know that you need help and we were talking earlier we do have an online um, we have an online group because we can't be in every city as of yet we have an online group you can log in there with just let us know in advance you can log in with an anonymous name no camera no nothing and just listen to see what you know these people are going through we laugh we cry we talk like female male there's athletes there's power lifters there's everybody uh, bare knuckle fighters military it's everybody just like we talked about earlier the the hardest thing is getting somebody to admit that they need help or just being there there's people that come that just want to be there for support system but then they actually find out hey i got something going on myself and then they can open up like i love that part of it yeah a, a term i actually used through um sparrow life um was therapy through recreation and it's i'm sure you've heard of it it's a it's a military bowling league that literally just invites people to come out and bowl like you're rolling a ball down a wooden <laughs> lane but you get to talk about other things and yeah. like you said you get to surround yourself with people because sometimes it's so easy to to draw back to isolate yourself um especially when you feel like there's something wrong with you that you're not making the right decisions and you you don't want people to see that um i love the fact that you're giving people this opportunity not just in the event but something that's a regular occurring thing where people can just come and listen, come and say, I need help and just be there for people. But sometimes that first step is, is, is so hard, is so hard. Yeah, that first step's a doozy. <laughs> what would you say to people who need to make the first step? Uh, come out, just come out, just see what it's about. Come out, see what we do, see what, how everybody interacts, how we talk. Like I said, you don't you you could come for months on end and never have to say what you got going on. Oh, I'm just here to support so and so. Mm -hmm. Just come out. But usually that's how people. Oh yeah, you play volleyball. I play volleyball. Yeah, right. where'd you play at? Oh, me too. The, the people can connect like that. Yeah, and and I see everyone here because that's something else that a lot of times traditional therapy I think can be very stigmatized. And although I'm a big supporter of it it's not necessarily for everybody. You can be out there, you can be with people. And that's the biggest thing is, is not being secluded, not being by yourself. So this is an event, one thing that you all do in a line of so many different activities, but what do you think the connection is between maintaining physical activity and your mental health? Um, definitely going out there and uh, getting your blood flowing. And when you notice uh, you're shedding a couple of extra pounds out that you, you were hanging out at the house and eating and drinking too much, um, you get out there and get your blood flowing. People are more apt to talk when they're hanging out and getting the blood flowing a little bit. Plus, it's good for your, your, you know, your mental health and physical health definitely correlate a thousand percent. So uh, coming out and getting a little exercise in and then, you know, talking about afterwards, it's, it's, it's proven proven yeah it's huge one thing i love the fact that you got involved with mvp but i'm i'm watching all of this and remembering when you said i i didn't want a job i wanted a, a purpose yeah. so how do you help other people really find their purpose after leaving athletics or after leaving the military because one thing we always hear 
I heard this so many times and I want to just kick everyone who told me this because you have to frame it the right way. Everyone used to always tell me, everyone wants to hire athletes. Everyone wants to hire military. And then we leave those places and everyone's like, well, what have you done? And I'm like, I smacked a ball around for a few years, but I was real good. You want to see some video? And they're like, no, kick rocks. What do you mean? So helping people reframe skills that they had in those entities, in sports, in the military, reframing those to be marketable skills in the job market. Yes. So my master's is in strategic leadership. So when you talk about reframing, that's basically what we try to do. Reframe your mind on, you know, there is other things that you bring to the table besides just uh, what you did in the military. You know, some guys, um, like operations specialists, not to dink them, but they have a specific job within yeah. the, what they do in the military. And they, they, they have some that correlate to, you know, with airplanes and track and whatnot. But if they don't have that specific uh, C school that they go through, what do they have to offer? Some people that come in as a bosun's mate, you know, they're just running the lines and painting the ship. What what can I do in the outside world? I don't bring anything to the table. So that's a big part of what we do in the military to try to set them up for success once they get out. But it's up to them once they leave uh, if they use those skills. But we still talk a lot. A lot of the guys that I mentored on the ships, uh, they still hit me up and like, hey, you know, I got this going on. What would you do? Uh, being a doc and a, just a, I feel like I'm a genuine person. So I, I'd love to help people. Like that's been ingrained into my soul since I joined the military. Love to help people. So that's why I think I gravitated a lot towards MVP because helping people out and still seeing them. Like I was saying last week, I'd rather you call me at three in the morning and tell me you got issues than getting a call from some entity saying that you're not around anymore. Right. That's a horrible feeling. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for everything that you're doing for this community. You are a genuine person and I genuinely appreciate you sharing with us. You know, I think getting to see someone like you be as open as you are, I know it's hard every single time, but I hope you know that it's it's helping so many people. So thank you. And I just want to make sure that people know how to keep up with you. And if they want to join the online group or if they want to join the event this weekend, what should they do? Yes. Mergingvetsandplayers.org. You can go on the website. There's a tab on the upper right side that has community events. You can sign up, come out. The event that we're having this weekend is at B3 Better Sports, um, 1230 Saturday. Uh, there's a uh, um, there's a way you can sign up on there, registration and whatnot. You can also donate if you can't make it. Like we always take donations on the website as well. A uh, shameless plug, but it definitely helps. There's thousands of, uh, of military members and athletes as well get through what they got going on. But this is a community workout, so it's for everybody. It's not just for veterans and players, anybody. Uh, we're talking um, some uh, po ex police officers, um, fire, uh, the people that work at the fire department, anybody. If you just want to support, come out, just get a little exercise in. We got a, a I say a food truck, but it's a little slushy guy coming out there. Island Paradise, they're going to support as well. Awesome. So come on out. Great. Well, thank you so much, Chris. I really appreciate you, and I appreciate you sharing. Everybody, we'll see you tomorrow morning on River City Live and 1015 River, River City Plus. Stay safe.